We have our fabulous keynote speaker, um, Becca Brown. She is a military spouse. And this year we are going to be featuring mill spouse life coaches at each of our events um, to talk to you all about those topics that are for the month. Um, so Becca is going to talk to you a little bit about goal setting and how you get to reach those goals that you want to have. It's going to be awesome. Are you guys ready for me? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to start sharing my screen and this is just going to work because I've decided it's going to. Yeah. Okay. See, I knew it would work. Okay. So as you may have heard or read in the bio on all the great stuff that Mill Spouse Fest has put out, I'm a military spouse myself of 14 plus years. It's 15 years in September. And honestly, like this was bar none, the best choice of my life, marrying my husband. And if you know my husband, if you really know him, you know how funny he is and uh, how much fun we have together. Also together, we have four kids, 12, 10, seven, and three. And I feel so lucky to be their mom. I'm also a certified life coach. I certified with the life coach school after using life coaching to learn the things that I now teach my clients, right? So I learned how to really love and connect with myself and um, really hold on to myself, so to speak, right? To create this loving and kind relationship with myself so that then I was better able to create that, the kind of marriage with my husband that we're both really excited to be a part of. And I just get to love all up over him. Um, I specialize in helping those who want their, their marriage to be better than it is and who have partners that love them, but for whatever reason, feel like they can't or won't um, participate in more traditional methods of marital help. And I teach those clients that in order to get the kind of marriage you want and the connection you want, it actually doesn't take two to tango like we think. You can do it on your own. Anyway, so that is me and I'm super excited to be here. I wish we were all in the same room. I think this would be so fun, but it's fun virtually too. So um, we're gonna talk about making dreams reality and we're gonna talk about you making it happen. So this keynote address is actually really a goal setting workshop in disguise. So get ready to jump in. There are worksheets under the files tab on the um, event page in the in this actual meeting. I think that's how it's called. I think I'm saying it right. Um, but if you don't have it yet, if you haven't downloaded it and printed it out, that's totally fine. All you really need, I mean, you're going to want to grab that afterwards, but all you really need for the work we're going to do today is just a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. Okay. Um, it's time to start thinking about what dream you want fulfilled this year. What do you want to to happen. And what I'll say is if 2020 has taught us something, taught me something, it's that anything is possible, right? So we live in a world now where I homeschool my three children. I never thought that would happen. And where toilet paper for a very long period of time was very difficult to get. Okay. Literally anything is possible. And so I'm taking that one little belief and I'm going to carry it with me in 2021. And I invite you to do the same. Okay. So by the end of this workshop, you're going to have a goal set uh, with the framework to support that. We're going to take you, I'm going to take you through that. We're going to do it together. Um, and that alone is going to put you on the path where you want to be, right? To creating what it is that you want in your life. Um, but then once we do that, that's just the first part. The second part is where I'm going to do, you're gonna, we're going to do a little learning. I'm going to teach you about how to use your brain to help make your success completely inevitable. Okay. Um, the other thing I'll say is for sure, if you have a question at any point, pop it in the chat and our lovely mill spouse best ladies are going to let me know and we'll answer it. So um, feel free to do that. Okay. Make dreams reality is like a big idea, right? I love it so much. I think it's awesome. And it's really easy to say, but it's so much harder. I find to take that big idea and to break it down and put it into play in our daily life, right? Day to day. So what we're going to start out by doing, this is what I'm going to take you through, is you're going to select just one 30-day goal to focus on. Okay, you can work on several goals throughout the year. And I loved hearing about Sybils and Emily's. I think that's awesome. Um, 
So you can work on several goals throughout the year, but I recommend, and you can just use the same framework that we do today to set yourself up for each goal. But I recommend you just take one. You just take 30 days and you choose one thing to work on, one thing to go all in on, okay? And the good news is that you totally get to pick. You get to choose your goal. And you just wanna make sure that it puts you on the path towards like what you want to actually happen. What you want is your dream, like, or the dream that you want to come true, okay? We wanna just, with this 30-day goal, what we're doing or what we're trying to do is just create momentum in your life that moves you forward, that will continue to prop propel you all year long, okay? Um, and I'm gonna remember that I have slides and use them. Okay, so you just wanna look for a goal that puts you on the path for your dreams becoming reality. Okay, so I find when it's time to set goals, there's usually two types of people. So let's decide which one you are. The first type, um, the first kind is the one where you really kind of know what you want and you either know and you're like, yeah, I'm doing this, no problem. And then there's also those that know, but they're a little bit afraid to say it out loud. You've got a dream or an idea on your heart or in your mind, and it feels scary. So you don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> okay, stay with me. I want you to pretend that we're together, just you and I, one-on-one. -on -one. I've got, and also we're going to pretend like COVID's not a thing. I've got my hands on your shoulders. We're like face-to-face, -face, not in like a weird way, like a really encouraging way. And I want you to imagine me telling you to just go for it. Okay. Imagine me saying, I've totally got your back and I know that you can do it because that's true. I totally do have your back. And I also know that you can do it. If you have an idea in your mind, on your heart, like open up to that possibility. You can just sit with it, open it up, open yourself up to it and just get curious about what it might be like if you were to actually go after what it is that's kind of the, the seed that has been planted. Okay. So sit with that. And then the other kind of people, the other kind of person, the other group is that where you really don't have any idea um, for what your goal should be, right? You're drawing a blank. So it's not a problem. I can totally help you. So I'm going to give you some things to think about when I'm in a situation like that. I like to do just ask myself a couple questions. So first I ask myself, what's working really well in my life? I always like to come from a place of like positivity, right? What am I doing really well? I make that list nice and long, pump myself up. And then I ask myself, what's not working in my life? Where's, where is there an area that I'd like to um, do some work in? Shift some things, right? And I have to say, I want you to resist the temptation to kind of use that against yourself. This idea of what's not working. It's just don't do it, okay? Just meet yourself with love. It's totally fine. And actually, it's a great opportunity if you do have something in your life that's not going exactly the way you want it to, like this is a great opportunity for you to jump in there and make the shifts or the changes, the changes that you want to. Um, okay, the other thing that can be helpful is to consider um, the possibilities in like categories. Now, this is obviously not an inclusive list, but I find that a large part of the goals that I see my clients set, I set for myself, I see my coaching colleagues also set, fall into one of these three categories. So you can see if one of these kinds of um, hits home for you and helps you see what it is that you might wanna be working on. So we can just start getting those juices going. And by the way, I would love to hear about in the chat um, about what you feel like you're gonna be working on. Okay, so get ready to put it in the chat. I'm gonna give you um, the format that we're gonna use. Okay, this goal that we set it's a very specific way to do it. But the goal we set is going to be very specific and very measured, okay? It's gonna be a result that you can create. And here's the, here's the uh, format. And this is, this is on your worksheet. So um, you'll see that when you download it. If you haven't done so yet, do it, do it afterwards because I don't want you to be fumbling that with that and, and miss these steps that I'm gonna take you through. Um, so again, we're just looking for a result that you can create in 30 days that puts you on the path with forward momentum to you creating what it is that you want. Okay, I'm gonna give you some examples. So if it's a relationship, so maybe you might wanna improve a relationship with your child. Um, maybe you wanna connect with them more deeply, right? So that's really hard to measure. It's really hard to know after 30 days if that happened or it didn't happen. So what, what I would say, if it were me, I might say, um, and there's tons of possibilities here, but I might say to myself like, oh, okay, so by, um, the 27th of February, I think that's about 30 days from today, 
by the 27th of February, I'm going to have gone on five like one-on-one -on -one dates with my kid, like kid dates. Those are fun, right? So that would be a result that I can measure. And after 30 days, I know for sure if it happened or not. We want to be able to measure if you were successful or if you weren't. That's very important. Um, another idea is uh, in the health category. So maybe it's your eating, like Sybil. <laughs> maybe it's, maybe you want to exercise. Wait, like Sybil. <laughs> maybe you want to work on your mental health. Maybe you want, um, like, what can you do? What, what does this look like? Maybe you want to set a goal to take a walk every day. I love walking more for mental health than physical health, I find. Um, some sort of daily self-care practice that you wanna, like you wanna result, you wanna create a result. Like there's so many options here. Um, and then the third category that um, I just talked about was, or I just showed on the last slide is contribution. And this is like, this can be a job or a business. It can be you creating more money for your family or saving money, or it can be you finding time to like do volunteer work. Maybe you set a goal that you wanna finish a course in 30 days, that's going to help you set a business you've been, or that's going to help you start the business you've been thinking about and dreaming of. Maybe you choose to volunteer for 25 hours over the next 30 days or five hours, or I mean, like it's totally up to you. Maybe you decide you want to reach out and network with five people or 30 people or two people in your area, whatever you want. There's just so many options. It just needs to, the way we state it, it just needs to be able to report the result that you'll create and then the date that it'll end, right? 30 days from when you start. Okay, so once you have your goal statement and it looks like this by the date I will have and what is it that you're gonna create, I would love to have you share it if you feel comfortable doing so. I think there's just so much, um, like we can just share each other's energy here. Um, I'll share mine. So by March 2nd, 2021, cause I'm gonna start on Monday, I will have logged 26 workouts. That's serious, right? I, I know, Sybil, I know. I know that's ambitious, but I'm so excited about it. I really am. Okay, I'm turning 40 this year. Happy about that. And I've decided that this year I'm gonna create habits for myself for this whole year that, are, that I feel like are gonna support the health and the longevity that I want to keep me healthy and young and able to keep up with my kids and my future grandkids for the rest of my life. And that starts, that dream for my life starts with this one 30 day goal. Okay. So what are you going to do? What is it for you? I hope you've got it written down. Okay. And you don't need to start today. You can, but start soon. Okay. I'm going to start on Monday because there's a few things I need to get in line before I start. And I, I'm just going to set myself up for success in that way. Right. Um, okay. Once you have your goal, the second thing you want to do is you just want to ask yourself, like, what are the obstacles? What is going to get in the way of you reaching your goal? Your brain should be very happy to provide these for you. What is, what is it that's going to be the problem? Okay. These are the obstacles and you'll see on your worksheet, there's a box for you to list them, but just take your paper, whatever you have and write them down. You take that one goal. What is it that's going to get in the way of me doing this? Like what you can even look like if I'm trying to start a regular exercise practice, well, I haven't, that means I, I don't, I haven't had one, right? So what has gotten the, gone in, I'm going to slow down. What has gotten in the way in the past that, that has uh, resulted in me not having this practice, right? And you want to ask your brain. And then when you write it all down, you want to ask your brain again. We want this list to be as exhaustive as possible, as complete as you can. Okay. So just write it all down, get it all down on paper. Okay. I'm going to show you what this might look like. This is from, this is for my goal, my 26 workout goal. Do you guys feel tingly when I say that? I do. <laughs> okay. First of all, I don't have time to work out, right? Amen. But it's totally fine. We're not judging any of these. We're not going to try to prove them wrong. We're just listing them. Okay. I don't know what to do. Check. I won't want to do it. Been there, done that. I don't have the right equipment to work out at home. Definitely not going to the gym. Um, I can't commit to getting up early. It's interesting to see where my brain went, right? Like I don't have to get up early to exercise, but anything that pops up there, you just want to write it down. And then the last one I found was like, it's just too much to try to do homeschool and everything else I'm doing and also exercise, right? If you guys are like me, probably within the last 12 to nine to however many months, like things have like your daily routine has changed. The things that you're expected to complete and produce and handle on a daily basis have, have shifted. So that's what my brain is telling me. 
you want to get them all down on paper. You don't, don't judge them. Don't, don't say, Oh, I, that seems lame. That's a lame excuse. No, just write it all down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find strategies to answer all the obstacles. You're going to find what, like how to solve the obstacle, right? And for each obstacle, you want to have a corresponding um, strategy is what it is. So same thing. You've written down the obstacles. Now we're going to write down the strategy. So this is what mine look like. So if my first obstacle is that I don't have time to work out, oh, that's easy. I'm just going to get up early and do it. There, I've just created some time. Okay, check. Uh, I don't know what to do. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find an app that tells me what to do. I'm going to download it and then like done. Not a problem. Um, I won't want to do it. Okay, this op or this strategy won't make sense to you yet, but it will at the end because I'm going to teach you this really useful uh, journaling technique to kind of get out of your own way. But what it's called is a thought download, but that's what this is. I will do a thought download each morning to get clear on what I actually want. Okay, you'll know about that in a few minutes. Then the fourth thing is um, I don't have the right equipment. I'll look on the app. I'll make a list. I'll get it bought this weekend, ready to start on Monday and on and on and on, right? So I want you to do this for yourself. Just find um, a strategy to answer whatever obstacle you have. And you may need to get creative, but the answer is there. Just decide that it's somewhere inside of you and then find it. Okay. Um, all right, so. I wanna make sure I've got it all said. So this is you making a plan, okay? And this plan is um, completely in support of what it is that you actually wanna create. And it's gonna help you take what you don't have in your past and put it in your future, in your present and in your future, okay? This is a framework, it's pretty simple, um, but what it does is it directs your higher brain, which is more in touch with what you actually want long-term versus what you want in the moment. Um, and so you direct your higher brain to go to work for you, to kind of find solutions to the obstacles and creates this framework so that you can totally get it done. Okay, so that's the first part. That's the framework for our goal. We've got it stated. We've got our obstacles, our strategies. We're good to go. But now I'm going to jump into the second part. And we really just want to learn, and you will, learn how to um, make your brain work for you. Okay, and three things we're going to cover. First of all, we're going to cover how to coach yourself and why you would want to. You do, by the way. Um, I'm going to show you how to organize your mind so that you really make make it all inevitable. And then I'm going to show you um, or teach you how to believe new things, which is really important. And you'll know why by the end. Um, okay, this is exactly the things that I cover with my clients. It's what I do for myself when I'm trying to make changes, right? So um, why do you need to coach yourself? Let's go to the example of a sports coach, an athletic coach, one that, that we're probably a little bit more familiar with that and the work that they do in the world. So the job of a sports coach is um, to observe an athlete, to kind of um, point out the things that maybe the athlete doesn't see about the mechanics or the performance. And also a sports coach, what they do is they kind of see um, where the athlete is now, but kind of where, like the potential, like where they could possibly go. And the athlete may not see that. And so that's the job of the coach, right? You can do this for yourself. You can totally use your brain to build the life that you want to make whatever it is that you dream about your actual reality. This is so exciting, right? So um, here's what you need to know. Your current life, your, your current life experience is 100% determined by what you habitually think and believe. Okay, did you hear that? <laughs> Let's read it again. Your current life experience is 100% determined by what you habitually think and believe. So the question here is, is like, what is it that you find yourself believing and thinking on repeat? What are the things that your brain is telling you is the problem? What are the things that are holding you back? Here's what I'll offer to you. Setting goals and growing yourself and your life into what you really want isn't really going to work. And you may have seen this if you've been frustrated in efforts in the past. Um, it's not really going to work until you figure out what it is that's holding you back. And this is sometimes an unpopular opinion among my clients, but it's never outside of us. Okay. 
we are all uh, military spouses or most of us affiliated in the military in some way. But here's the thing, it's, it's never that last deployment. Sorry, it's not. Love you, but it's, it's not that last deployment. It's not the duty station that you're at that's too cold or too far or too desolate or too fill in the blank that you are kind of hating. That's not what's keeping you from what you want. And it's or not even like the military itself. Whatever it is that you think is keeping you stuck, it, it's not that. The answer to that always lies inside of us, okay? When we're stuck and unhappy or unfulfilled, whatever it looks like, if you feel like you haven't been able to make, like get the results that you want in your life, this idea, this dream, um, it's always, always, always because of what we're choosing to think and believe, okay? This is another part where I wish we were face-to-face. -face. I would love to hear back from you guys. I have a couple questions. Okay. Oh, and also, if anyone has questions, like feel free to interrupt me, Sybil or Emily or anyone. Okay. Um, so here's the questions. Number one, I just want you to ask yourself, what is it that uh, you want for you, for your life? What is it that you want that maybe um, you don't have yet? And number two, what is it that you were made for? What do you dream of accomplishing? Let's go back to like that little seed that's planted sitting in your brain or on your heart waiting for you to, waiting for you to do it. Like you're here right now and I see that you could go here or further, right? And I want you to see this too for yourself. This is all possible for you if you're willing to do the work on your mind, okay? And when you're willing to do the work, there's three things you get. Um, first of all, and, and the work is really just taking a look. It can sound super simple, but it's so rich and, um, and layered. But the work is just being willing to look at what it is that you're thinking. All the, all the thoughts that you've just accepted on default and looked at and take a look at them and take a look at what they're creating in your life, right? So when you're willing to do that work, you get three different things. So first of all, this increased awareness of what you think, um, you get that. And then with the awareness, what happens is you stop just accepting it. You stop just um, staying in default, which is good. And number two, then when you understand, so it's kind of like a hierarchy, right? You, you start out step one. And then once you're there solidly, then we move to, to step two. Then you're able to um, understand the impact of what you're thinking and how it's either building or not building the life that you want. Then you open up the door of possibility to grow. So you're there, we've gone up two steps. Now you go, and the third thing, the third step you can get to is when you understand that, those two first two things, that's when you move into a place where you're creating and designing a life you love with your dreams coming true. And as cheesy as that sounds like, it's true, okay? Right here, me, right here in front of all you, this is like dream come true for me. And this is the framework that I use to get here. Little goals at a time. Okay, so you may be wondering why you even have to do this work. Why doesn't it just happen on, our, on its own? I'm with you. <laughs> but here's the thing. Growth is hard. Change is hard. And for sure, we know about that as those of us associated with the military. But the thing is, is there's some programming in your brain that's at play. And I want to teach you about it. Okay, switch. There we go. Okay, so this is a little thing called the motivational triad of your brain, okay? And you probably likely heard it and learned about it at one point in a science class somewhere along the way, but you probably aren't looking for signs of it in your life right now, even though it's absolutely showing up somewhere for you, okay? It's just programming for your brain. It's just what your brain is wired to do. So the first thing, to seek pleasure, right? That's why chocolate is so good, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure of it, but your brain looks for, um, your, your brain wants to do what feels good in the moment. It looks for what's fun. It's all in on that. Okay. And then that takes us to uh, avoiding pain. We want nothing uncomfortable. Okay. Nothing that we don't want to do. Nothing that feels hard. We just, we're not really interested in that. Okay. And then the third thing is to reduce effort. And really this just means that your brain is trying to conserve energy by doing the things that the way that you've always done them right? So um, that way you're, because when your brain has to figure out a new way of doing things, it takes calories, 
Like it takes energy and your brain's um, trying to keep you alive. This motivational triad is in the interest of keeping us alive. And it worked really well back in the caveman days, but we're just not really in danger of, of uh, the same kinds of things now, right? Like there's no danger for most of us of running out of energy, of running out of calories to support all the things that we want to do, right? But it's just like, let's say your goal required, um, the goal you set required you to um, create a new morning routine. Like mine's going to. <laughs> your brain is like, no, 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 no. That's not what we do. We stay in bed till the last very second until that three-year-old comes and wakes you up and then you begrudgingly get out of bed. Let's keep doing that. We know how to do that. It's not a problem. So can you guys relate to this? What I'm saying, are you seeing these tendencies at play in your life? For sure they're happening. And I want to say that like, this is just how we're wired. Absolutely nothing has gone wrong, but I want to offer you, offer to you that if you don't override this programming, which you can, but if you don't override it, then you're left living a life on default. You're left living a life on default. And this looks a lot like settling, um, like staying in your comfort zone. And you probably won't like this, but it might look like you, your couch and Netflix for many hours. <laughs> it might look like you, you're endless scrolling on your phone. And I can relate to both of these things. It also, if you don't override these defaults, it might also look like a failed 30-day goal. And that sounds like a threat, and it is not. <laughs> but what we want to do is we want to just make this as easy as possible for you, okay? If you're willing to grow into this role of coaching yourself, you can absolutely override the factory settings on your brain, and you can learn. Let me show you. We just switch it up. One too far, hang on. Okay, so we can just override the programming and we do it just with intentionality in, let's say that again, intentionality inside our brain, okay? We can um, move towards discomfort. We can seek growth instead of pleasure. We can uh, look forward to taking action that's in support of our goals and dreams, even if it feels tricky, even if it feels hard to do, okay? The other thing I wanna say, which is so big, is I want you to stop and consider the relationship that you can build with yourself through this. When you're willing to not only look at the thoughts and the beliefs that live in your brain that's, that's creating your reality, but also to look for the potential of where you could go for the growth that's possible for you. I just think of it, you become, in doing so, you become like your own greatest ally, your own greatest advocate. It's such a beautiful thing because you always have you, right? There may be people in your life that you're like, yeah, they're really cheering me on, which is wonderful and great. But what if they're not there? Or what if you wanna do something that they're like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> good try. Like if I told my husband right now, <laughs> I wish you were here. Um, he's downstairs wrangling the four kids that never leave the house. If I, but if he were standing right here and I said, hey, honey, I'm so excited. I'm gonna work out by March 2nd. I'm gonna work out 26 times. Like he would laugh. He would like sit down on the ground because he would be laughing so hard because he's just like, yeah, that's probably not gonna happen. But here's the thing, I can laugh with him and then go back to this idea that like, I can totally create whatever it is that I want. And I can enjoy him and his laughter, like genuinely when I'm, and this is what it is, like when you create this relationship for yourself, that's just so strong where you're just like, you're there for you no matter what, then you can really enjoy the people around you. I don't need to change my husband to like show up for me and be like, do it, you got it. Where he's downstairs like cheering me on through every rep, right? It's not gonna happen. And if it did, it would be weird and I would hate it. I can do that for myself. And I'm saying all this because I want you to know that you can do the same thing for yourself. Maybe you have a husband or a wife, sorry. I don't wanna just speak to the women. I know there are men here too. Maybe you have a spouse who would go down there and like cheer you on. That's so great. I think that's wonderful. But the beauty of this is that you're not stuck if you don't have that, if that's just not the natural tendencies or the personality of the person that you're married to, okay? Okay, so allow yourself to seek growth, to lean into the discomfort. Doesn't that sound fun? When I say it like that, it sounds extra special, right? Like we're just gonna lean into it, right? Um, and just allow yourself to find new programming for your brain. Are you guys with me? Everyone, yeah? Okay. 
next thing on the list, the second, the second section, is that we're going to organize your brain. You see that? Who gets this reference? I don't know what to do with my hands. Does anyone? Anyone? Okay. If you know what movie that came from, put it in the chat and you win. The first person to put it in the chat wins total bragging rights for the rest of the day. Okay. So we're going to organize your brain. I like to think of my mind like I think of my closet, a closet in my house, in the closet in my bedroom, to be exact, to be more specific. And I want you to do the same. Think about your own closet and then ask yourself why you might want to organize it. Why would that be something you might want to do? And we're just going to assume that you do so that this works, okay? So often we want to organize it because it makes our day go better. It's easier to find what you're looking for. And it's like super calming to see that, right? Who, who is me guilty of like you organize a space and then throughout the day you walk back into that room 23 times an hour just to look at it like, oh, I'm good. Like, oh, yep, still clean, still organized. Everything's still in the right place. <laughs> is there anything more fun than that? That's how you know I'm in my late 30s, okay? So um, all of this being said, the truth is, is that an organized closet is just so much more efficient. It just makes everything easier for us, right? And when, the, when a closet is disorganized, it's hard to see what's in there, to know if you even want it, if it's even stuff that you want to keep because it's so full of clutter. Our mind works the same way. And the good news is to organize our mind, we take the same steps as we would to organize a closet. Okay, so here's the deal. When you organize a closet, guess what you have to do? You got to take it all out. You got to empty that thing. Have you guys ever done this? It's extremely overwhelming. <laughs> I did this in our last duty station. I took everything out of our closet and laid it on my bed. I could have died. There was so much there, but that's how you do it. You may be tempted. And I've certainly done this in the past where I'm like, that closet's not really working. I can't really get to what I want. And I'm just like, oh, I'll just move a few things around. I'll just take one thing out and get rid of it. We'll leave the rest. It doesn't work. You've got to take it all out. You've got to look at it get a good look at what you actually have. Okay. So this is what you do. You take it all out. You try everything on. You look in the mirror. You ask yourself, does it fit? Do you like it? Do you feel amazing in it? And from there, once you do that, then you decide whether you want to keep it and you want to continue to give it a space in your brain or in your mind closet. <laughs> if you want to keep and have a space for it in your closet, or if you want to pass it along. Okay. Um, so then you take that smaller keep pile, right? It's gonna be smaller than what you originally had and you put it back in the closet, you put it neatly, um, you make sure you have a space for everything. And now the closet's organized. You know exactly what you have and anything that is in there has earned its place, right? So we're gonna do the same thing for your mind. And this is work that I highly encourage, okay? So the first step is to take everything out of your mind. And I have an easy practice that simplifies this. It's what I was talking about before, the thought download. Um, but when I say empty your mind, it sounds super life coachy. You're welcome. And kind of nebulous and like, oh, kind of out there. Like, how do I do that? But I teach, I use this and I teach it to my clients. It's a super easy practice, uh, a journaling practice. Um, and it's so simple. So it's called a thought download. And um, it's super easy. What you want to do and there's a worksheet, there's two worksheets in the files. The second one is just a sheet of paper with lines on it for you to do your thought download. It's not required. You can just use any old scratch sheet of paper. I don't usually keep them because what it is you wanna, um, like I'm not filling a journal with my thought downloads, right? I don't wanna keep these. Cause what you wanna do is you're gonna get a pen and paper and set a timer for five or seven minutes or 12 minutes or you get to decide here. And then you start the timer and you just start writing. And what you wanna do is just anything that's up there goes on the paper. You just sit there and you don't stop until the timer goes off. You sit there and if you don't know what to write, then you write, I don't know what to write over and over again until you do have something to write. And so, like I said, this isn't something you're going to want to keep for posterity because you're going to have thoughts in your brain that you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want anyone to know I think that. But don't push it down, let it out, get it out on paper. So then you can decide, right? Like you're, maybe your grandma who we love knitted you some horrible sweater and you're like, oh my gosh, I would never wear that. And you shove it in the back of your closet. No, cause it's still in there taking up space. We love grandma. You take that ugly sweater out and you either put it in a keepsake box <laughs> or you pass it along, right? We want to do the same thing for your thoughts. 
get them out on paper, even the ugly ones, even the nasty ones. Don't let them go back into hiding. Okay. Because even if you think you've pushed it way down, it's a hundred percent affecting you in some way. Okay. So, um, whatever's in your brain goes on the paper and you just keep going. And what that happens or what happens then is that then you've got all your thoughts down on paper. And I like to think of my thoughts as like actual things, right? When I pull them out of my brain using a thought download, then there they are on the paper. And they're now things that I can like hold in my hand. I can turn them over, take a closer look like you would do with items in your closet. Like, do I like them? I can look and see like, are they helping me be more of who I want to be or are they help or they helping me be less of who I want to be. And this is where you get some understanding of what's happening in your brain. Okay. So this idea of a thought download, I like to do them as often as possible. And what I'll say is for the next 30 days, starting Monday, a hundred percent, I'm doing these once a day, at least because in order to really live into that goal that feels ambitious and to make it inevitable, to make it so I like, I know for sure I'm going to achieve it. The awareness and the attention behind what I'm thinking is super important. And this is where it starts is with this thought download, like turn those thoughts into things that you can look at and evaluate. Okay. So then the next step of organizing is to take inventory, right? You try it all on. How does it feel? That's what you're doing with your thoughts. Try them on. Do they feel good? Do you like them? Do you want to keep thinking them? Do you want to keep choosing them? Because you're choosing them, although before you do this work, there's not a ton of awareness there, right? But for, for sure, you're actually choosing them, even if it's just on default. All of this is up to you. You get to decide what you are willing to let live in your brain, okay? So then the third step is to choose what you want to keep and then put back in your closet, back in your mind. You might find in your thought download that you have some not useful thoughts, okay? Um, let's take it back to your 30 day goal and let's see how this kind of plays out. So if mine is to log 26 workouts in 30 days, and when I think about exercising, I think things like, this is the worst day to start the day. This is the worst way to start the day. Well, that's not super helpful, right? Or I might think like, I just have to get this over with. And then there's a silent light because I hate it, because it's hard, because it sucks added on at the end, right? Because our brain wants us to be right. This is another thing I'll teach you about your brain. Your brain wants you to be right. It wants to keep you right. So what happens is, is whatever you think, your brain then goes to work to look for all the ways in which that thought is true. And it doesn't notice the things that are in, um, that uh, contradict what it is that you're trying to think, right? So if I think this is terrible, then my brain is not going to be like, actually, it's not terrible because once you do the workout, then you feel amazing and then blah, 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 right? Whatever it is. And then don't you want those jeans to fit again? The ones that you had to give up during COVID? Who's there? <laughs> my pants are super tight right now, but my brain is not going to be like, oh, no, no, no. You really want to fit back into those pants. No, your brain is going to be like, girl, yes. Ha, or boy, I'm sorry, man. Yes, this is hard. You don't want to do it. You like Netflix is still there. Like passwords already put in, like you're good to go get the remote. Like, let's do this. So what you want to do is you just want to think things that are in support of the things that you want to do. And it's going to take some work and some creativity, right? If your default is exercise is hard and it's, and it, I probably don't want to do it for me. If that, if my goal is exercise, and of course, like there's not a right or a wrong way to think about anything I personally feel, but you just want to get super intentional and, and make sure that what you're thinking or the you're thinking around your 30 day goal, like supports it, aligns with it. It's just all in the interest of making this as easy as possible for you. Okay. Let me give you another example. So you want, you might want to improve your relationship with your husband or your wife. So you pick some measurable goal, whatever it is, there's tons out there that you could do to do this work. And then your thoughts are like, Ooh, I hope this works because I don't know what else to try. Or you might be thinking like things are going well, but things aren't going well, but maybe this will work. Or even like, I shouldn't have to be the one to do this, but I guess I'll do it because they're not going to. Okay, how do those thoughts feel? I know this is an example, but when I go to that place and think those thoughts, like, okay, it makes me feel sad and doubtful. And when I'm sad and doubtful, guess what's really hard to do? Really hard to show up and love on my partner, to do fun things, to find new ways to connect with him. It's just so much harder. And that's why we look at what's happening in our minds. 
because whatever is in there is totally driving our action and making it either easier to do it or harder to do it. Okay. We get the thoughts in line first, the thoughts that like make us feel excited and pumped up. And then taking the action is so much easier. And I'm all in for easier. How many times have I said easier in the last 30 minutes? A ton. If only we were playing a drinking game and it wasn't noon, right? So what about you? Do you want things to be easy? <laughs> okay, so good. Now we know how to do it. So when you clean out your closet and you throw away so much stuff that wasn't working for you, that doesn't fit anymore, you often need to go shopping to fill that back in. Cause maybe you clean out your closet and all of a sudden you don't have any more jeans. Your jeans are either ugly or too big or too small, whatever it is. And now you're like, oh, I need new jeans. I'm gonna go shopping. I'm gonna find some new jeans that I love, that feel good, that make me feel amazing. It's the same way with thoughts, right? Once we start taking a look at our thoughts, it's really easy to look and say, oh, okay, so this thought isn't really serving me. I, I'm, I'm gonna pass that along. I'm gonna let that one go. Then what we wanna do is we wanna find a new thought to replace it, okay? So this uh, brings me to the last thing I'll teach you and that's believing new things, okay? This is a practice, it takes practice. Um, and it's a good practice at that. And honestly, at the way I see it is like, I think it's such a privilege that we're totally in charge of this for ourselves. Like it's such a gift that this is how our bodies and our minds are set up that we get to choose, that we get to decide what we believe, okay? So again, with all of it, <clears throat> we just wanna get the awareness of what you're thinking and you're believing, okay? The work starts there as always. And then some things are just thoughts, like I'm tired today, or it's really cloudy and really cold. So I just, I want to stay in bed. These are thoughts. Maybe you have a thought like the kids shouldn't be as loud as they are. <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> or another one, I feel this thought in my bones, homeschooling shouldn't be this hard. Okay. That is a thought of mine that I want to replace and upgrade because it's actually making it harder for me to do what I want to do, but that's a talk for another time. Okay. So those are just thoughts. But then the other thing that you have in your brain are beliefs, okay? And let's talk about a belief and what it is because if you're anything like me, we, you might feel, oftentimes you might feel like kind of precious about your beliefs. They might feel extra precious to you, right? They can feel too sticky to let go of because some of them, some of the beliefs that are in your brain and driving your action are things that you've, that have been in there since childhood, okay? They've potentially been with you for a long time. So they can kind of gain this power over you. But what I want to offer to you that a belief is simply a thought that you think over and over. And it's just something that you've accepted as true. Okay. And this is fun work to do. It can, it can get tricky. I actually have a podcast episode on this. It's called um, How to Change Your Story. If you want more support, if you kind of want to loosen things up in your brain, if this feels tricky for you, because it's like anything that's like worth doing. It's not that it, it can feel tricky at times. Okay. So the thing about your brain is that it loves to be right. So for what you're choosing to think and believe, it continues to collect evidence that proves it true. I missed a slide, I think. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, so this is a good one. Choose what you believe about yourself on purpose, okay? Um, <clears throat> you may be believing things about yourself that are making it really hard for you to get the results that you want, okay? And maybe they sound like some of these that I have listed, but I'm gonna give you an example of how this plays out and how the beliefs that you have may be limiting to you, okay? So this is an example about weight loss just because it's easy to come up with, but you can apply it to any kind of limiting belief that you may have. So let's say um, there's a person who weighs a, a specific amount, whatever, however many pounds, and that person has the belief, I'll always be fat, okay? And that person probably has carried that belief with them from childhood or from when they were a teenager, okay? And then when that person looks in the mirror, they criticize their body, they notice their arms and their belly or their thighs, maybe their double chin. Every time you, they look in the mirror, they just criticize their themselves over and over again. And every time they did that, every time they walked by the mirror and didn't like what they saw and criticized what they saw, 
they strengthen that belief, I'll always eat that. And the stronger it gets, the more you strengthen it, the more ingrained it becomes. And then suddenly, not suddenly, eventually, you just accept it as true. This person having this belief for so long, it's just accept, they just accept it as true. But here's the thing that I want, I want to offer you. Beliefs are not universally true, okay? They're not facts. They're just really practiced thoughts. They're just things that you thought over and over again. And the reason why this is totally the best news that I could give you, you're welcome, is because this means that you can choose on purpose what you want to believe about yourself. You're not stuck with a belief that you don't want to be thinking. And you'll have some thoughts that you have and some beliefs about yourself that you'll want to keep for sure that you love. Yes, do that. But some beliefs are there and you're, you may want to pass them, pass them along, let them go, right? Your beliefs may be limiting you. They may be keeping you stuck. Okay. Um, not yet. Hang on. So it's important to get, I said this, I think in every section, but it's important to get awareness to find out what it is that you believe about yourself. Because again, it impacts the results that you create for yourself or don't create for yourself, especially in terms, like if, if we encase it in this idea of this 30-day goal that you set for yourself. So let's go back to the example of the person who believes I'll always be fat. So let's say this person sets a goal to lose 10 pounds over the next three days or the next 30 days, but doesn't do any work around their limiting belief, okay? So at first, you can probably relate to this. I know I can. At first, this person would be super excited, right? We're so excited when we set new goals. Maybe they're going to make a food plan, get an exercise schedule together. But then at some point, usually pretty close to the beginning, at some point in those 30 days, that belief will pop back up. Like, oh yeah, I totally forgot. But I remember, I'll always be fat. So then this person would get discouraged. The enthusiasm for the goal wanes, and then he or she doesn't follow through with the exercise and the nutrition, and then they give up long before the 30 days are even over, and they definitely don't hit the goal. And the interesting thing here that I notice is that when they do this, they're just further strengthening the belief, I'll always be fat, the belief that that person probably doesn't want to have, okay? So it's important you do the work around your limiting beliefs. So to make dreams reality, starting with this first 30 day goal, let's buy into new beliefs. Let go of the limiting beliefs. Okay. It's actually fun. I think because you get to choose your beliefs. You might believe things that you don't like, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Personally, I used to believe this was my belief. I give up when things get hard. And I have some evidence for this, okay? I signed up for a lifeguarding class when I was a teenager because I wanted to be a lifeguard. I could just picture myself up on that stand in the summer, in the heat, like living my best life, right? But boy, was that first class hard. As it turned out, I had no idea the level of fitness that swimming requires. It was a very embarrassing show for me, that first class. And I have to tell you, I never went back. I didn't call. I didn't cancel. I didn't ask for a refund of my money. I just never went back. And actually, I never really spoke of it again. It's interesting. I'm going to have to call my mom today and ask her, like, what was that? Like, we never talked about that. I just didn't go back. It was so painful. <laughs> and then, of course, I have other, there's other evidence of my life, in my life of this. Like, there's two times when I quit college, moved back home, eventually transferring to a school closer to home to finally graduate. Like, it's there. The evidence is there. But I found myself slamming up against that belief when I decided to start a life coaching business. Starting a business is hard, okay? So me believing that I give up when things get hard, it just wasn't going to cut it. It's a very difficult way to start a business, okay? And the other thing I'll say is like, who really wants to believe that about themselves? Okay? Super lame. We can do better. So you get to choose. And the other thing I'll say is that no one has to believe, no one has to agree with you about what you believe about yourself. You can keep it to yourself. You can shout it from the rooftops. You can get a tattoo on your face, whatever you want. But whatever you choose, no one except you gets a vote. Okay, so back to me, I decided to replace that thought with a better one. I decided to replace it with, I'm a total bad A. 
Now, I'm not sure if swearing is allowed here, and I think my mom might watch this, so I'm just going to keep it at that. I'm a total bad A. And the funny thing is, is going back to my husband, if he were standing here, which would be a different kind of a keynote address, if he were standing here, I don't know that he would agree with that. And it's totally fine. He doesn't need to agree with it. He doesn't, and it sounds like I'm bad mouthing him. I'm not. I love my husband. We have a really great dynamic. But the dynamic is not that he is supporting me, that he's like holding me up. I'm holding myself up and he's holding himself up. It's a beautiful way to be in relation with someone else. So he doesn't need to believe in my belief because I'm doing the work to make my belief in myself so strong that I don't need anyone else to buy into it. I can let others, my husband even, (laughs) believe something different about me if they want. And it doesn't change my belief in me that I'm a total bad A. And in fact, I have a little uh, card right behind where I see when I come up here to go to work and it says, how am I going to be a bad A today? It's good. Okay. And this thing is, it's so much more fun to believe this and so much easier to show up in my life and in my business in the ways that I want to. Okay. So this is going to be work that you're going to want to do for yourself. I'm watching the clock. I'm almost out of time. This is what you do. I'm going to hurry, Sybil. And Emily, you want to find a new belief by envisioning your future self. Okay. You can picture yourself as the person who already does whatever it is that you want to be doing and ask yourself, what does he or she think? So for me, I'm thinking, what is a person who's committed to fitness and health and shows up drama free for their workouts regularly? What does that person believe? You can do the same for the future that you want to create. Okay. So then you accept this belief as truth. It's just the way it is. You ask yourself if it's true. You look for ways in which it might be true. Okay. And then you just practice it as much as you can until it's your new default. And you practice it by thinking it a ton. You put it in your phone, set an alarm to go off four times a a day to read it. You set it as the wallpaper. You just, the more you do it, the more you read it, that's you practicing it. You write it in your own handwriting can be helpful. Even you do the work And then that belief is yours. You put it in your pocket and carry it around with you and no one can take it from you. Okay. This is how it's done. Okay. Um, This, this is how you take your brain and make it work for you to make your success inevitable. So I'll leave you with one quote and it's by someone called who's named Dr. Erin Pollinger, and this serendipitously showed up on my Instagram feed at just the right moment. And she says, massive success isn't meant for just the lucky few. It's meant for us all. And again, if we were in person, if I was right in front of your face, I would be saying that to you. You can have whatever it is that you want. If you are willing to do the work to override your default settings and to create a new way of doing things. That's what I have for you. Thank you, Becky.